some people get real tired. About three hours before the end of the race, my car, with Windridge driving, broke a piston. No doubt this was due to our strenuous efforts to improve our position. An hour later, other things began to happen. First, the class-leading Triumph developed a rough engine and had a long pit stop. The Lund Escott 1800cc MG passed it and went on to win its class. About at the same time, the last Porsche RS came into the pit with a seized gearbox. No more factory Porsches in the race. There was also plenty of excitement in our pits. Fitch's Corvette was running perfectly cool at 175 degrees when he came in for a pit stop. In the rush to service his car, a crew member removed the radiator cap to check the water, and the pressurized water shot out. Then they couldn't get it all back in. After a couple of laps, the engine began overheating. Under the rules, you can't put water in under 25 laps. So they brought it in every three laps and packed about 25 pounds of ice around the engine. We all learned something here. Don't touch anything until you have a reason to. The crowd really got a kick out of it, though. They cheered at every ice stop. Really gave it an ovation when it crossed the finish line. This is the winning car making its final pit stop. Ferrer and Jean de Bien had a good lead and the photographers had a field day. Notice the absence of seat belts in the European cars. It's pretty late in the race now. Things are getting a little more tense, a little more hectic. Just like every race. Quite a few Ferrari coupes. More of those entered than any other make. Good, fast, durable cars. Quite a groove of oil and rubber laid down now. The S's, toughest stop down on the course. The European scorers are very experienced people. Didn't make a mistake the whole race. The translators told us what was going on. Very few of us ever mastered that scoreboard. Only a couple of minutes left in the race now. Here's the end of the race. They're tired, dirty cars at this point. They're not going very fast because all the positions were assured at the finish. This is often the case. Only 25 cars left out of 55 starters. A real test of endurance. car was over, about 30,000 people just swarmed over the whole pit area. It took about a half an hour to get the cars back. We just couldn't move them, a real sea of people. That's Bob Grossman with the Champagne, the number three car that finished eighth, best of the Corvettes. John Fitch and Grossman drove it, wonderful performance. The fellow with a cowboy hat pushing through the crowd is Oliver John de Bien, the winning driver. There's John de Bien and Paul Ferrer, his co-driver. They're mighty happy, and they should be. They both drove a beautiful race. This was John de Bien's second win. He took the 58 race with Phil Hill. Average speed for the winner, just over 109 miles per hour. So that was Le Mans for 1960. Here are the remaining 15 finishers. Second, Ferrari, Rodriguez Pilet. Third, Aston Martin, Clark Salvadori, two-year-old car. 
fourth Ferrari GT, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And then our number three Corvette in eighth position. Aston Martin and number four Corvette. This was Camarotti's only finishing car. Eleventh and twelfth places went to Porsches with an MGA, Lotus Elite, and a Triumph TRS filling out the top 15. The Corvette surprised a lot of people over there. We were quite happy over their performance. The brakes lasted very well, and they were fast down the straightaway. Not enough to catch the Ferraris, but there were an awful lot of cars that didn't catch the Ferraris either. We beat an Aston Martin, and that type of car won the race last year. The two Jaguars entered didn't finish, although the older D-type car did a fine job. It was running in the first five until the last few hours when it broke a crankshaft. The Porsches just weren't fast enough and didn't last. The Maseratis proved to be very fast, but they all retired early in the race. So, the first four Corvettes did amazingly well for a first year effort. Number one flipped, no fault of the car. Number two almost finished, even after a pretty bad smash up early in the race. 30 cars didn't finish the race. Of the 25 that did, Two were Corvettes. Three marks were represented in the first ten. Ferrari, Aston Martin, and Corvette. We beat out and outraced cars that cost two to three times more money. We beat them with an honest-to-goodness American production sports car. All in all, we placed ahead of 11 other makes of cars. I think the combination of Cunningham, Camarotti and Corvette did a mighty fine job.